some significant changes this time around. Well, I think you've to got you. to put the word convoluted in front of Euro <laughs> 2020 here yeah. because we just spent the best part of an hour in a production meeting trying to figure out what the hell is going on. I'm a bit of a traditionalist, having played at the Euros. Yep. I like to have it in one country if you can. Uh, but UEFA have decided they're going to go down a different route, whether you agree or not. 12 host cities. I think logistically it's much more of a problem, particularly for fans, and much more expensive uh, for the fans. Then you've got the travelling of the players. Uh, however, I don't think it will detract from the tournament itself because of the quality of the teams that are in the competition. However, I think it's overcomplicating it, and mm. that's maybe nice. Well, and, and I think Craig hits the nail on the head. I, th I do think they overcomplicate it. Whenever you need more than 2,000 words to describe what the draw, yeah. you know, how it's going to happen, that already is more complicated for me. But I'm intrigued on one aspect of this is there are host nations. Yep. So now you're playing group stage games in a European tournament, a major tournament, where now you're playing an official away game. Mm. Because now you are playing in England. You are playing in Denmark. So what does that impact have on the tournament? Uh, but needless to say, I think we're not doing the fan any justice to say UEFA has overcomplicated this a little bit. And I think it's going to make it interesting to see What's the ambiance of the tournament? Is it now just, as we saw in 16, all in the country of France? Mm. Or now is it a little bit more intriguing where you're going to see each pocket of Europe having their own European parties and that ambiance kind of being built? I don't know what to expect because this is the first time it's happened, uh, but it is intriguing to me in that aspect. I think in some sense there's, a, 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 there's almost an effort here to try and please everybody. If you think about FIFA and the World Cup that's been increased to, what, 40-something 48, 48, 48 teams. Yeah. You, you, you took, talk about diluting a tournament. Mm. Uh, and I think there is some sense here from UEFA that they're trying to get all these different cities and countries involved to try and keep everybody happy or bring the game to certain countries that I think, for me, the fact that it's so difficult to explain to the average person yes. that's viewing and watching this I think explains the whole process. You've said you want it in one place. Uh, well, what do you stand to lose when you go to this pan-European setup? I think you lose the identity of having the Euros in one, just in one place. Mm. And I think you lose, it becomes so much more difficult for the fan. That's what you lose. You lose the ambiance, you lose traveling on trains, planes, where you've got the drunken fan, the non-drunken fan, everyone's celebrating it. Now it's more diverse, you know, spread out. Mm -hmm. And that's intriguing to me because now group stages are actually away games when they weren't in previous tournaments. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.